Hello everybody, my name is Michal Hvorecki and it's a great honor to be here in uh, Grundals Hus in Reykjavik and uh, my host today is an uh, Icelandic poet, a writer, translator and a former musician, Brahe Olafsson. Great to have you here with us. Yeah, thank Hello. you. Great to be here. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Brahe, my first question goes back further to 1990, the year you performed with the band The Sugar Cubes as a mm -hmm. bass player in Prague. Mm -hmm. Do you have any memories of this gig? Yes, no, actually not from the gig. Uh, we were probably too uh, intoxicated by your wonderful beer and, 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 and strong drinks. <laughs> uh, but I have very clear mem memories of uh, staying in Prague. We stayed there for, I think, seven or ten days. Mm -hmm. And we also went to uh, down south to Tels, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, I remember that very well, uh, with very fondly, yes. I know that even one year before you toured Eastern Europe, for it's maybe one of the first Western bands, you performed in Baltic states as far yeah, as I know? Yeah, we played in the three Baltic states mm -hmm. and, and then we were supposed to play in Leningrad but that uh, show, which had been sold out, it was, at the, mm. it was supposed to be at the Olympic Stadium. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but the day before, it was cancelled because of some election that was going to be held the day after. And they feared that there would be some riots or, or inconveniences. Mm. And so. How was it at that time <clears throat> when you were a young aspiring musician and poet? Did you have any idea about the Eastern Europe in general? Or was it like a completely unknown part of the world you hardly ever heard about? No, no, I mean, we knew quite a lot about mm -hmm. it. I mean, uh, and uh, we, <clears throat> it, uh, it probably, because Iceland at, at this time, you could say was almost, uh, like it looked a bit uh, socialistic, mm -hmm. uh, like a very austere, uh, culture, uh, because we had restrictions on, on, on import mm -hmm. and uh, so, but, but going there in, in 89 was, was a, an experience that changed a lot for me uh, uh, in, the, in the sense of uh, like seeing the world and, and understanding the world and I still benefit from, from this experience mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. You brought a book, a collection of poems, published in the 50s, in 1958. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me why is it so special for you and, and uh, what's the connection to Czechoslovak culture? Yeah, well, this, this book uh, was very influential uh, for young aspiring poets, uh, although it's published in, what, 58? Uh, you know better That's than That's a long time yes, ago. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, it was still being circulated uh, when I was starting to write mm. in the uh, like late 70s and in the early 80s and uh, <clears throat> we learned a lot from this book I mean uh, mm -hmm. because uh, before getting to know like European poets and, and poets from South America and all over the world I mean we naturally only knew we only knew the Icelandic mm -hmm. poets and writers but, but this was a revelation seeing this like a modern poetry mm -hmm. uh, because we became modern rather late mm -hmm. uh, in, in literature mm -hmm. and in everything else mm -hmm. actually. Uh, There's also a poem by Vítězslav Nesval. Uh, yes, it has uh, five or six uh, poems by Vítězslav Nesval mm -hmm. which uh, and I think he is, uh, <coughs> for me, he was the most influential poet in mm -hmm. this book. Uh, maybe along with uh, Federico García Lorca mm -hmm. from Spain. Mm -hmm. And Neruda, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, well, Neruda is a Czech name, isn't it? Yes, he it's, adapted uh, yeah. this Czech name yes, as yes. Uh, some mm -hmm. sort of uh, rebellion. Yeah, uh, he yeah. S solidarity with the with the Czech nation. Mm -hmm. I think due to the Nazi occupation was this yes, decision. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 because when I, I was starting to write uh, like a semi seriously, I, I was mm -hmm. very. Uh, taken with uh, surrealist uh, texts and, uh, and Dadaism and uh, and this these poems by Nesval uh, spoke very directly to me. And well, when you mention it, I'm absolutely not surprised because this this uh, also fits very well to the music of Sugar Cubes in many ways. I think like uh, mm -hmm. and you definitely you were one of the poets for the band. So so uh, 
I, I think the, the Czech people will be very happy to hear that Nesval <laughs> actually had some sort of influence on the history of alternative music in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could say that. I mean, uh, I actually I didn't write lyrics for the Silly mm. Cubes. Uh, uh, the singers took care of that. Mm. Uh, but we were very... Our... Uh, the atmosphere around us was very like in, in the spirit of surrealism because mm. it, uh, some of the members of the band they came from an Icelandic uh, uh, group called Medusa. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a group of young surrealists mm -hmm. uh, in in the early eighties. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, so we were. I mean, our our lyrics uh, show this influence very much. Uh, some of them are quite in the in the spirit of surrealism. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that this is the second time or third time I hear here in Iceland about this restriction society of the late 70s and mm -hmm. early 80s here in Iceland and that uh, some even co compared it to dictatorship like it felt like uh, like everything was forbidden and it was hardly ever any alternative culture what made it this way was it the religion was it the politics what what caused this uh, this conservative atmosphere which was here when you were very young uh, well probably just the conservative parties that mm -hmm. run the country and uh, and have mostly been running the country since uh, 1945, mm -hmm. since we got uh, in the total independence. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's probably the fault of just uh, very uh, uh, conservative persons or, or mm -hmm. and parties. I mean, we just had a, an election a few days ago, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and it's still the same story. And we get the old parties, uh, <laughs> <laughs> although we have all these uh, like uh, liberal, uh, like more free thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, democratic young parties, uh, they have still not been able to come to the surface mm -hmm. as they should have. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't know, um, but then, I mean, we, yeah, there were the restrictions on, on, on imported things. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So we had, um, we had lots of uh, Russian cars here mm -hmm. because we exchanged uh, uh, fish mm -hmm. and uh, some other things for for, <laughs> for cars. Russian cars yeah. like Moskvitz and, uh, uh -huh. and Lata. <laughs> they were here in Iceland quite popular. Oh, very popular, okay. yes. I, I, yeah. I, I, I had once a, a Lata, <laughs> which I, I, I miss very much. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Like, you were from the generation which discovered punk, which mm -hmm. discovered alternative music. Mm -hmm. Was it at the very beginning, because also in Czechoslovakia, especially underground rock music played a major role in an opposition against the dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And um, how was it here, like when, when the new scene, when the music came, mm -hmm. what happened, what changed in the society? I actually don't think music, uh, rebellious music here in Iceland didn't, uh, it didn't change things as I believe it. Uh, did for you mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. in Middle Europe. Uh, but, uh, no, I mean, it's just, uh, it opened up the mentality more, uh, like, uh, but, but I mean, it didn't have any political impact, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it probably had, but, uh, but you can't really sort of uh, put a finger on it mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. You had basically two careers uh, as a bass player in a band which emerged uh, mm. as a volcano, like became a phenomenon in Europe and even in abroad uh, in the US. And, um, and then you switched back to writing. Um, how you look back at these two uh, parts of your life and the, of your identity? Well, they, uh, when I look back, they're sort of uh, mixed together. Uh, <clears throat> well, the, this this period uh, from eight, 1986 to 1992, the period of the Sugar Cubes, is quite. Uh, it's funny to look back on it because uh, we, we started uh, in, nine, in 86, like I said, uh, when Reagan and Gorbachev came here for the meeting, and the first thing that uh, our company, uh, which had, we, we, which we had just formed by then. Uh, our first publication was a, a postcard with a picture of Reagan and Gorbachev <laughs> and it uh, became very popular. We sold uh, 5,000 copies mm -hmm. of it and uh, we were able to finance the first recording mm -hmm. of the group, mm -hmm. uh, and which, be, which was uh, Birthday, the song that uh, got yeah. us uh, known. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and so uh, so we sort of uh, like a, we had a, this, this domino effect. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just things started to happen from there. But uh, but then uh, in, in the same year, I published my first book of mm -hmm. poetry, which was the uh, publication number two of Bad Taste. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then for these six years, I, I, I didn't write constantly. I, I was like a mm -hmm. too occupied with mm -hmm. music and traveling and especially waiting. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, <laughs> the life of the musicians, musician uh, is mostly about waiting mm -hmm. for nothing, basically. For the gig or for, for, for everything? For, for, for gigs, for like in studio, mm -hmm. the studio mm -hmm. work is mostly just waiting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> so I was uh, quite relieved when we decided to uh, put a full stop to the sugar mm -hmm. cubes in 92. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't very serious about becoming a writer. I, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I was writing poetry and, uh, and after the group st stopped, we, I, I started to work in a record shop and, and then I worked for an advertising agency mm -hmm. for five years where I actually learned to discipline myself, mm -hmm. uh, which was very valuable for being a writer. Mm -hmm. So, so in, uh, and I published some books uh, in these years, uh, but then in 99 I, I published my first novel, mm -hmm. and from 2001 I have been a full-time mm -hmm. uh, writer. You didn't mention it, but you also translated, you translated Paul Auster's New York trilogy, as far as I yeah, know. Well, uh, yeah, well, one of one of them. One of them. Mm -hmm. uh, then I've translated uh, two plays by Harold Pinter mm -hmm. and some poetry from from Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. How this part of your identity took place, and why did you decide to? I want to also translate my favorite writers. How did it? Why, why did you decide to become a translator as well? Uh, well, I actually didn't decide. I I I. I I don't see myself as a translator, but I was, I was asked to translate these uh, plays by Harold Pinter because uh, I had been writing plays myself mm -hmm. and the people at the National Theatre, mm -hmm. they, they knew about my interest in Harold Pinter, mm -hmm. who, is my, who has always been my sort of one of the top five mm -hmm. favorite mm -hmm. uh, writers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that just came about that way. I mean, it was, uh, I, 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 I didn't ask for it or decide mm -hmm. it myself. But, uh, mm -hmm. But it's a, a valuable experience, mm -hmm. uh, getting deeper into Pinter's text. Mm -hmm. Now, 30 years later, uh, you have also your first retrospective. Uh, tell us a bit about this project, which took part on September 4th, this mm -hmm. year, 2021. Mm -hmm. what, what was it? It even includes a, a map of Reykjavik with a topography of your novels and your mm -hmm. characters. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically a map of your Reykjavik as a literary place where the stories took place. And also mm -hmm. uh, some sort of a character maps this way, uh, to mm -hmm. how they are interconnected in their relationship uh, and how they travel from book to book. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about this project, please. Well, this, uh, this retrospective or this uh, writing conference is, is held every year. Uh, well, actually, it hasn't been... In, uh, because of COVID, yeah. uh, there's mm -hmm. been a gap of two years, uh, and it, uh, well, it's sort of uh, it's about like looking, getting a panorama of mm -hmm. uh, the writer's career, and talking about his books and and work, uh, and uh, actually this thing that you showed us, uh, it, <laughs> well, two of the persons who organized this, uh, they uh, just had this idea to make a map of my characters because uh, most of my novels they interconnect uh, actually only two of them are totally independent mm -hmm. uh, so and I'm still working with uh, characters from my uh, previous books mm -hmm. uh, and and it's just it, it was very uh, it made a lot of sense for me to have this uh, <coughs> this map this uh, map of streets and, and characters uh, mm -hmm. because it helps me <laughs> like a, uh, like forming uh, I, because I have in, well the plan now is uh, that I have two more books yet mm -hmm. to write uh, uh, with some of these characters mm -hmm. uh, 
but then I'm going to stop that. To more, to more book projects with them. Then. Yes, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's it's a it's a very nice thing to because I like these characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, most of them are very dislikable, but uh, <laughs> but I like them. I, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> so I I I I, I, f I feel. I feel good staying with them a bit mm -hmm. longer. Mm -hmm. Until now, in Czech language, we only have one short story translated uh, from Icelandic of your work. Uh, mm -hmm. This short story about the gas station, uh, mm. which is uh, very bizarre. Where uh, we are absolutely unsure who you can you can trust in this story. The characters mm. ha are are full of uncertainties and you are looking for the truth in the story somehow but it's mm. getting more confusing and that's that's what I found so fascinating about the storytelling because it's mm. somehow it seems very Icelandic but it could be also universal because uh, it's about the relationship of a <coughs> son to his parents and about uh, uh, secrets in lives and uh, mm. is this the way you you like to write with uh, some sort of a big secret in the, in the background of our lives? Mm, it's not uh, when I uh, when I wrote this story. Uh, this story is quite. Uh, I think it's from two thousand and two or mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I mean, I I, uh, I I never sit down and intend to to write exactly about this. Uh, I I usually now I I I form a sort of a, a loose frame for mm -hmm. a story, and then I start with some characters, but I. But there is there is no actual message that I want to put forward. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just I, I uh, you put two characters together and and you know that something is going mm -hmm. to happen if mm -hmm. if the characters are interesting enough. And uh, but I, I think that's uh, I mean that's the topic uh, that mostly uh, sort of seeps into my mm -hmm. books mm -hmm. is uh, like uh, how people uh, talk. Interact uh, with each other, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and how they do not interact. Yeah. Uh, how they lie, lie yeah, to each other. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, because that uh, very often creates a comic yeah. uh, situation yeah. or atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And I see myself as a, like a, a comic writer. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, my, my books are probably not like laugh out loud mm -hmm. funny, mm -hmm. but, uh, but they... They're comedies, uh, novel, novel comedies. Yeah, I mean, maybe I wouldn't say comedies, but mm -hmm. they have... Uh, I have a comic view of mm -hmm. things and mm -hmm. people and sort of so inevitably that uh, mm -hmm. just comes into my stories and mm -hmm. plays. Yeah. You also have a writer wife, you are like a mm -hmm. writing couple. Uh, it's not the first but it's still rather mm -hmm. rare. How mm -hmm. is it to be a writing family in, in Reykjavik? Well, it, is, it suits us very very fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, My wife is uh, she's a, she's a historian. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and she started uh, publishing books uh, of history, two books, uh, which were like uh, they were very accurate uh, historical books, but still with some uh, fictional elements mm -hmm. in, in them. And but then she turned over to fiction completely, mm -hmm. and now she is publishing her third novel. Uh, but we are so different mm -hmm. writers. Uh, which is good because then we don't clash and we are not in competition <laughs> with each other. It helps and the relationship for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, we help each other. I mean, she is mm -hmm. my best editor. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm That's not great. her best editor. She is a better editor <laughs> than me because she has this background in mm -hmm. in uh, in in history and, and mm -hmm. she's uh, like a, has more like a like a sort of a technical ways of working. I'm more sort of loose, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, I'm not that disciplined as her, but so it, it works very well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, <clears throat> you, you say it, it's rare to, like, a, <laughs> that the couples are mm -hmm. both writers. Mm -hmm. Yes, probably it is rare, but, uh, but I know of some other couples here in, in mm -hmm. Iceland mm -hmm. that both write. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bry, which is your favorite place on this island? Mm, from the uh, maybe geographical point of view? Well, I, I must confess that I'm, I don't know the Icelandic countryside as well as mm -hmm. I should. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I would say just Reykjavik yeah. is my mm -hmm. favorite place, but, mm -hmm. uh, but now for the last four or five years, uh, uh, our, we, we bought a little summer house in, mm -hmm. the, in the west of Iceland and we go there a lot. So mm -hmm. 
so that's also my favorite place. Uh, but it has uh, a downside owning a place like that. It so it 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 it, 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 it results in that you go less to other places. You mm -hmm. just go to this one <laughs> place in the countryside. Mm -hmm. But but I um, yeah, these are my two favorite places. And actually, I'm my the novel I'm working on now takes place in this very mm -hmm. summer house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not really inventive, or, or, uh, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Brian, we are very much looking forward to welcome you next year, in July 2022, on a tour with the months of the author's reading in hopefully Ostrava, mm. Bratislava, Brno, and maybe some more cities if the situation will allow it. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm looking very much forward to visit you.